I'm Louise. Um, I live near Bellingen in New South Wales and I've worked as a professional organiser all my life and I've done a lot of travelling and so I've learned how to live with less and for various reasons um, I've reached the age that I have and I don't have a lot of money for a whole house but actually don't have a desire for one either so my idea is exactly what you see here. It's about 7.9 metres long, 2.5 metres wide, it's actually 2.489 actual width so it's just inside the legal limit um, and it's 4.3 from the, from the ground at the highest point. Lots of windows and um, very tall doors. This darling little fellow here cost half what the entire window and door budget was for this um, tiny house but I wanted it because of course it gives that amazing ability to have an inside outside type of thing. It's probably a little bit low and if I have my time again I might drop this deck because these are actually two separate decks. Again the friend who built it um, being a designer actually designed them they could be assembled in an hour and disassembled in an hour so we built one and then he said I think I've got an even better idea let's build another one so I think if I think about it in the future I might drop this one down so we've got a bit more head height here but I mean it's fine for me these are a bit taller than usual I just and by or not bifold triple panels for obviously that whole sense of and we designed it again so the floor is completely level so there's a real sense when you sit inside of living inside outside Got a beautiful double picture window down here, which leads out to a beautiful view of the property. My goodness, it needs a clean though, doesn't it? <laughs> yeah, and I mean, although I, I like to live fairly simply, that doesn't mean I am a minimalist. Um, I do still like having the few things that I have around me in, in my space, but I don't have a lot of stuff. Um, we, as you might find with most tiny houses, designed the kitchen to be both a corridor to the bathroom but also um, access to the loft upstairs and lots and lots of storage. I live in a tiny home because I value living with less. I'm a keen recycler. I love quality and purpose driven acquisition and I think that the, the combination of all of that as, worse, as well as working as a professional organiser means that I'm just the perfect person for living in a small space. Well I was running out of money. Um, um, I owned a house with my now ex-husband and we sold it. Property prices in the local area went through the roof and I have I actually was reflecting upon this the other day and I realised that um, I have been minimising for quite some time now but I don't know that I actually intended to shoot for a tiny house until it became apparent that I wasn't going to be able to afford a house in the area. That would have been what, what actually did it. And now really I can't think of any other way that I'd rather be. I certainly wouldn't want to invest hundreds of thousands of dollars into a house that doesn't offer me a whole lot more than this. I don't keep anything unless it's absolutely useful and it knows exactly where it lives and I just have a spot something for everything somewhere for everything and they're all just the same those now this these are my junk drawers in as much as they're tools whoops tools for still I've got a bit of building to do this is my sweet little fridge which I I think is perfect I'm a single woman and it's you know a small fridge just doesn't work I don't need a big fridge this is perfect this is sort of um, vacuum cleaner luggage spare linen out of season clothes, that type of thing. This is my wardrobe, which would send most people, most women, a bit crazy because there's, it's only 70 centimeters wide. Um, but most of the things I've got, I fold. And again, I use dividers to keep things organized. So I wouldn't mind, my wardrobe is probably something when everything else is complete, I'd like to do a bit more of a blitz and get some new clothes and get rid of a few more things that I'm not wearing. Oh, I've got my washing machine, of course, which I couldn't live without. You know, I mean, it's small, but it's got everything. I just love it. And this is my little bathroom. If you'd like to wander in and have a look, it's got a one meter square shower. So it's a little bit um, bigger than your 
standard chair. We've got louvers here that, and I've got, they're frosted down here so I can't be seen from out there. But you know, I, I feel like I'm connected to the outdoors, so I love that. I think that some of the benefits of this lifestyle are keeping, easy to keep clean. You don't lose things. You don't have stash spots where things can be lost so you can stay on top of things. I actually think a key benefit would be being able to literally just lock the door and be able to go away and not worry about the property in particular. I know that's probably true of most houses, but um, it just feels small and neat and easy to do. Um, yeah, and as I said, living, you know, I. My annual weekly turnover is negligible because I'm not buying things to fill a space. I don't need to spend a lot of money on cleaning equipment or products or anything like that. Everything is smaller and as a result, you know, I'm semi-retired and, and that suits me. In terms of challenges, I would say the only challenge that we had was getting the, the trailer, trying to get the trailer organised because the build itself was sensational. The gentleman who built it, my friend, is really fast and very capable, so it went very speedily. I've lived on my own for a number of years now, but I don't think I've been this happy for a long time. It really, what I love, this home was built for me. And so I think if you've got an idea about the sort of place that you'd like, if you can manifest that, then the joy that that represents is with me every single day. And, and you know, even if I were in a situation where I might be tempted to live somewhere else, I would never let this go, I don't believe, even though I'm good at letting things go, because it, it literally is exactly what I wanted. And it gives me an enormous pleasure. And I think that's the key, is, is trying to shoot for what you want. A lot of windows, a lot of ventilation, and really good insulation are probably, I see some tiny houses that have got, they, they sacrifice windows for, I don't know, maybe it's wall storage or I'm not quite sure, but I like to be, you know, for me to be able to see the outdoors, I feel like I'm living in a much bigger space. And insulation, of course, winter or summer is going to be a great thing to have. So um, Terence Conran, who um, is one of my design gurus, he would say that the two most important things with it, designing any living space is lighting and flooring. We did a bit of research for the toilet and actually this was one that came up with great reviews. Um, it's made by a, a company called Virotech. They've got an Australian um, operation and I have to say I give them six stars for customer service. But the toilet itself is nice looking. It has a fan which operates 24-7 but it's, it's pretty silent. But even if the power goes out and the fan stops, um, it doesn't smell in the tiny house given that we've got you know no distance at all I think that's that's a great product. It's a very simple kitchen I'm, I have a, a philosophy in life I like to eat food that takes the same amount of time to prepare as it takes to cook as it takes to eat so I've actually only got one cooking surface an induction cooktop I do have a barbecue outside if I need to do a roast or apparently you can make cakes in them but I, I eat a lot of salad a lot of fruit salad um, of course, I love eating a steak or, you know, I'm certainly not vegetarian, but I cook meals for my dad every day and I manage with that. I manage really well with that and I love it because it's easy to clean. You can see from looking around that I'm quite a clean individual. And I, I mean, there's no better spot to do your dishes than to, to look at over a view like that. It was in the vicinity of $45,000. Now that's, it's a steel construction, fully steel construction. Um, with double skin insulation throughout, uh, heavy duty steel beams on the roof because we live under major trees and over the bed area, more frequent and particularly heavy duty screens and a sheet of crim safe above the bed so that if anything falls down, it's not coming to get me. Um, that window, as I mentioned, was $3,650. And then of course the doors and so on. The people who own the property have got a very extensive solar um, story, um, both on their house and another little cabin on the property. Um, and whilst I don't think, uh, generally I think that may help run these items, but at the moment we've worked out it's costing me $7 a week to run the tiny house. Now that will change in winter when I put that electric panel heating on, but I mean, that's practically nothing. And then as far as water is concerned, you can see a little pump 
over there in that tiny little pump house. It all comes from under the ground. We built it with economy in, in mind, as in um, the designer was extremely particular to, to annotate everything that was required to get literally the last shred of panelling to not have to buy an extra sheet or a bit of steel to be able to use something. So although it's really well built, we had almost no rubbish left after the build that wasn't recyclable. It was a fantastic project. It's, I've got it fully documented, but it was a really brilliant project. The Tiny was originally designed to have built-in bed, uh, probably a single bed here, and cupboards. But, you know, when it comes down to it, at my age, this is everything I've got. And I don't, these items of furniture were handmade for me, actually, by the gentleman who built the Tiny House, but they're 35 years old and that came across with my great auntie Margaret you know 50 years ago from Scotland so I don't I didn't want everything to be built in I know it looks a little bit probably busier than some people's houses but it suits me because I can look around and see that each and everything that I've got on display has personal meaning for me I just love it I just I, <laughs> I'm literally brought to tears I can often uh, just sit here and I thank my lucky stars definitely start paring down your possessions um, because I, I, I work as a professional organiser. I'm extremely skilled at it. I've been moving all my life. I don't have any junk and I still had to get rid of stuff to move in here. And the idea of getting a tiny house and then having a storage container, anyway, that's not why, my way of doing it. I don't really subscribe to that. but just starting every day just like at some some days when I first started moving in I would just say I'm getting rid of three things today doesn't matter how big they are just three things um, so yeah and then keeping some kind of a uh, ideas board for the sorts of things that really appeal to you and maybe a list of suppliers that you really like like if you find a toilet that you think is going to work or a construction method that you like or a tiny house builder that you get a lot of I definitely look for reviews if you're getting any work done by anyone outside of you know your own personal family or friends read the reviews because um, they can save you a lot of trouble the beautiful thing about tiny houses I reckon is that they suit a lot of people they suit um, single people obviously men or women they suit older people which can be a real boon you know for someone such as myself who took a financial hit when things changed, when I was divorced. They can suit young couples because they can own their own home without having to um, necessarily pay for a mortgage straight up. Some people actually manage to make them work with children. Not my cup of tea, but some people love it. And, and look, it, but it can suit all sorts of different people. I think that's what I really love about it. And. It's a kind of necessity by our housing crisis, which is actually a really joyful necessity, is the way I like to see it. And a lot of people do. A lot of people, once they've lived in a tiny house, are not in a hurry to go back to a big house. So it's just a nice, easy step up. And then the idea is, as I get into the top here, I could hit the top. But of course, I'm already in, in bed by then. Oops. But yep, come on over. Beautiful views and lovely fly screen ventilation up here so it's uh, and that's basically and look I wouldn't really even have those things up here but I, I probably need to get rid of a couple of things I really just want this to be a sleeping space it, the, the tiny was designed with really good flow through ventilation so you can feel the breeze coming through the top here now and down there and I've got a fan so it's never hot and look I'm not usually up here during the day um, but at night time it's never been an issue and um, the only heating I've got is a little um, wall panel over there on the far corner, electric heater, which I only installed towards because I only moved in at the end of last winter and uh, I think it's going to be exactly what I need. I just need uh, some curtains, a little bit more window treatment, but if anything this is nice and cosy when I come to bed. To live with less touch the planet lightly and most importantly more above and beyond any possessions our personal relationships to, to take care and give love and be kind much more you know I love quality things I love things but they're nothing in the end 
I was running women's tours to the south of France. Uh, if you look up All Things French, you'll find my um, my website and social media. And the idea is to kick off those tours again next year. So if you're looking for uh, a trip to the south of France, allthingsfrench.com. Thanks for watching. And if you enjoyed this video, please share it with a friend. Also, if you want to watch more Alternative Dwellings, we've got a playlist popping up right here. And we release new episodes every single Sunday. So consider subscribing.